Hello again. Hello. Hello, if hello. If you were with us before, hello again. If you're just joining us this evening, hello. Hello, hello. hello. Bonjour, bonsoir, bonne nuit, au revoir. Très bien. Guten Tag. C'est bon. Buongiorno. Dirtle. Buongiorno, come va? Hello. You didn't, you didn't know I was a linguist, did I didn't, you? I didn't know you had a mastery of so many different languages. Mm. Mm. Um, uh, hello, Daniel. Hello, Eloise Whiting. Hello, Francois Kamenzuli. Hello, Katie Fenton. Okay, so this isn't going to be a boring chat about how awful alcohol is. It's going to be quite the opposite, actually. It's going to be talking about how, um, you know, I'm a recovering alcoholic for 15 years. You're a drinker. We're in a effing pandemic crisis. Um, in unprecedented In unprecedented circumstances. So the most obvious danger to anyone who's struggling with alcohol or is a recovering alcoholic is the potential to relapse or to turn to drink as a solution. And in a way... Linwood, hi. In a way, now, you know, everything about the preconditions of being self-isolated and in a pandemic, when you go to an AA meeting, some of them, not all of them, but some of them have all the notes, you know, bits of paper on the wall saying... Hi, Amanda. Avoid being hungry. Avoid uh, being angry. Because uh, it will leave you vulnerable Avoid to being tired. Because, yeah, it leaves you all vulnerable to, being, to, to drinking. And then one of them often is avoid isolating or self-isolating. It's seen as one of the preconditions of pop. bad sort of recovery, not bad recovery, because no one judges you. Oh, to, to leave yourself yeah, vulnerable. Yeah, to leave yourself vulnerable. It's like when, you know, you, there'll often be discussions if you go to a regular AA meeting. Mine too, Emma. Someone in there will say, have you seen Charlie last couple of weeks? And people will say, no, 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 he's isolating. Kirsty Wilson, I'm drinking every night through boredom and skint. Bored, yeah, right. Leanne Thorogood, I had to drink a couple of times this week, but made me feel more depressed the next day and paranoid. Well, I'm pleased you say that because, yeah, I mean, a number Thank of... Thank you, Petra, what a lovely thing to say. A number of... Uh, he, he, you know, we've got a number of issues with alcohol around this particular crisis. The, the World Health Organisation has specifically stated that to drink to excess is to leave yourself vulnerable to this disease. And they don't mean, I thought when they said that, that meant, you know, that you're over years and years and years, you may have drunk a lot over the years and your immune system and your body is a bit knackered and da 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 da. I mean, if I'd carried on drinking, I, we'd be very worried about where I was at now because I'd have left well, myself. I don't think you'd still be alive. I, I probably now. still wouldn't be alive. You definitely wouldn't be alive. Yeah. Um, so. Cause it, cause, because the amount of dangerous positions you put yourself into when yeah. you were drinking. And, then, and you know what? And the weird thing is, if you had died, it wouldn't have been recorded as a, a death due to alcohol. It would yeah. have been, you'd fallen down the stairs or you'd cut your That's arm. Look, Debbie Lugard says, off-licence haven't been told to close like other shops. Really? I mean, I'm guessing there could really? be an absolute revolution if they did. Because pubs are shut. Wow. And people need to get their alcohol from somewhere. So there's that side. I of think it. they've probably made the decision, most governments know that alcohol is a way of keeping the masses... Quiet. quiet in one yeah. sense yeah so i think they would think if we were to take alcohol and cigarettes and all that stuff i mean you can't take everything away but i i'm really worried i'm really really worried a lot of my friends as well so amanda i think said that have said that they're drinking much more and they're not drinkers but they're, everyone's saying they're drinking more yeah yeah absolutely i mean i'm just so glad that you're sober because of that i don't well there is that but also i've noticed oh, well, on would. social media there's an enormous amount of humor and, and very funny humor it's not to be humorless about it there's a lot of humorous posts about drinking yeah. it's like it's the thing to do now is to be holding a drink and be in a sort of you know dinner jacket or a or a or a nighty or something saying i'm drinking my way through this with share phillips share phillips i have one rule never to drink alone due to suffering from depression i'm finding very hard to stick to it now well, that is the case in point. Drinking on your own generally will lead you down a wormhole of depression, anxiety, and uh, and and also will diminish your um, immune system, even in the short term. This is what the World Health Organization say. So if you're binge drinking every night now, I, all I could recommend is, and, and obviously if you're not an addict, because that's very, you can't just easily say stop drinking to an addict because there's other sh stuff going on there. But if you're somebody who likes a drink, but you're, you're worrying that you're drinking a bit too much, I would severely advise you to reconsider yeah. um, and find some other strategy only, yeah. for coping. Can I just read this? Anastasia Marin, I'm just, don't move it. I'm due to have my baby girl any day today. Kept it a secret, but told everyone today. 
for a spark of joy. I'm so oh, excited. Oh, my God. You've kept it a secret. Congratulations. What? Oh, well, thank you for sharing that with us. And Liz Howlett, hi, Nadja, gave up with you last year, I remember, for 100 yes. days and never went back. Wow. 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 Oh, wow. Of course, it was the brilliant book I read, The Unexpected Joy of Being Sober, which I really, really, really do recommend to get. If you're struggling with drinking and, you know, um, that, that, that really enabled me to give up for 100 yeah. days when I did it last year. So that, that would be a recommendation. There's lots of AA meetings online as well, aren't there, Mark? The well, there are lots of AA meetings online, but there are countless sobriety organisations now sprouting up all over the place. I mean, mm. you, know, you, know, you know a number of people you've worked with mm. and you've interviewed. The, 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 what's the book? The... Just talked about it. Then. Oh, you did. Sorry, I was reading, I was yeah. reading comments yeah, and reading yeah. notes. Um, you know, so there's lots of people you can talk to. There's lots of other groups that you can go to. I'm not just an advocate of AA. I don't go to AA as, as much as I should do. Um, but, uh, Somebody just earlier there, Mark, said something that would be good for you to answer. She said that her mum has been, I think she said chronic alcoholic since she was 10 years old. And obviously that's so difficult. And she said that um, she her mum will get money to drink and then she doesn't hear from her for weeks because she's off, off it. Right. There's a really good... Um, you know, like there's AA, there's also a group for adult children of alcoholics, ACOA, isn't there? Which yes. might be something for you to consider. They're online as well yeah. and they're on Instagram and Twitter yeah. because it's a really, really, really difficult thing. And I like the way it's called the adult child of an alcoholic because yes. what's happened to you as a child is with you right through it as an adult, isn't it, when you've been around somebody that's yeah. drinking when you're... I mean, one of, the other, one of the other characteristics of being an alcoholic, and I can talk about this with great experience, is that one loves being able to privately indulge one's addiction. Because the reason you do that is because you, you're free of judgment, and by being free of judgment, you can essentially be free of guilt too. Mm. And one of the dangers with this is if you're certainly on your own and not within a family, it's easy to go down that wormhole. So, for example, even with Nanny Di, who stopped drinking about six years ago, it, it's a much bigger challenge for her to stay sober because she hasn't got those people around yeah. her to, at the very simplest, so stay sober for. It's amazing that she does it. Yeah, and so in, the, in these conditions, it would be very easy, and I think a number of people are probably doing this as well, people who are known for perhaps being sober or struggling with their drinking, we we'll use this as an opportunity to, to justify on. relapse yeah. and justify an indulgence or, well, Christ, it's so bad. I mean, if ever there's a moment to do it, now's the moment. And I can understand that, that thought. It's that thought of, in, 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 in normal circumstances, it's that thought of, they have a saying, poor me, poor me, poor me, pour me a drink. Uh, you know, you feel sorry for yourself. We are all quite valid in feeling sorry for ourselves right now. It's a very sad time. It's a very Mandy sad time. Mandy Nanny, oh, my heart goes out to you. I worry about my daughter. She drinks red wine, but it's stuck in the house with my grandchildren. Oh. Well, that, that's the other problem, of course, is that if you are a, a, a heavy drinker or, or you know, a, a, someone with a major drink problem or an alcoholic, or an alcoholic in denial. I mean, These that's, that's the most difficult. These are all just different words for the same yeah. thing. It's but like, it's what, if drinking is impacting negatively on you or yeah. the people that you love or the people that you care for, yeah. then that's a problem. Because people will often say, oh, but, oh, yeah, but, you know, I never, oh, I never wake up on a park bench and I don't have to drink every day and yeah. I can go a whole month without drinking. All these things that we say don't necessarily mean we haven't got a problem with with yeah. drinking and actually in the unexpected joy of uh, sobriety she talks about that she said it's really annoying the way people say people have a problem with alcohol the problem is the alcohol yeah it is because alcohol is a highly addictive yeah. like and dangerous thing for yeah. a lot of people isn't it this is a great statistic from america that in the week ending march 21st during the coronavirus crisis uh, alcoholic beverages skyrocketed by 55 percent Wow. 55%. Somebody just there was saying, she, she was writing from Canada, and she was saying that it was, oh, yeah, here, Nura. This Canadian pandemic. liquor stores are considered essential services. I mean, you know, so it throws a spotlight over how as a culture, leaving, leaving liquor stores or off-licenses open is kind of an acknowledgement yeah. that as a society, we are, depend, we are dependent. Shocking, isn't on, it? We have substance dependence as a culture. 
shocking, isn't it? And that's Imagine not if prim you and had proper to go about in. it. I, I have, Maddie had a glass of wine with me as we were watching you. We're not anti. This really isn't coming from an anti-alcohol. Oh no, and I drink. No, no, no. If no, I absolutely. wanted to sit now and have a glass of wine, I would sit. And but have I, a glass I, of I wine. think that what's that thing you often say about? Exactly, Lily Clayton. If alcohol is a new drug now, it would be legal. And, oh, absolutely. And it's the only drug you have to apologise for not taking part in. So can you imagine if somebody walked into a party and went, terribly sorry, but I'm not going to have any heroin yeah. tonight. Yeah. I've, it's only I'm doing a run in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, I had a bit too much heroin last night, so I'm not going to have any yeah. today. And yet that's what people have to do if they don't want to drink. And the fact yeah. that it's classed as an essential service is fascinating. Isn't the it? Oliver Masterson, it is a coping mechanism for some people, yeah. but it's how that coping, it, what we're talking about is where that coping mechanism will tip into something far more dramatic, and make far more corrosive worse. and make everything worse so that you end up feeling lonely, hung over, your immune, your immune system goes. I mean, know. I think I think one or two drinks, but there's very few people that can have one or two. One or two drinks is something different. But if I ever have more than two drinks, I will guarantee I will wake up at four o'clock in the morning because it disturbs my sleep. The liver goes into dry, into overdrive at four o'clock in the morning, yeah. wakes you up, you feel a bit sweaty, you feel a bit disorientated, you don't have a proper sleep, you feel knackered, you get up in the morning, you've got less money because you paid for the alcohol, you've got less brain power because you're, you're knackered. Yeah. And it never, ever makes anything, it never makes anything. But, you know, one of the things I'm most frightened of is drinking when I'm depressed. What's, I never yeah. drink. Like, sometimes when we've had something major go on and you say, we'll have a drink, I go, yeah, oh, yeah. no. I get scared because it will make it worse. It will definitely make yeah, it worse. Yeah, yeah. So I drink if I'm happy or if I want to be a little bit happier. But but I think, and that's what I worry about with people in this. You get to the end of a terrible day mm. because it is a terrible time and just think, oh, I'm just going to have one. And then you end up having four or five. Mm. And then the next day you feel a bit shit. So maybe you have one at like five o'clock instead of seven o'clock. And we're only in week one and a half of self-isolation. Yeah. And I know because a lot of people have already reached out to us and said that. Where is that going to end up if, we, if we're doing this? Exactly. And that's not to say that you I won't have done worried. that and you might not do that in the days to come. My advice would be to anyone is, because I like, drink, I like being around people who drink. I have no kind of issue with people drinking. I, my advice would be, if you've done that two or three nights in a row, just put, take, your foot off the, take your foot off the pedal for a bit. Because it, in the end, the benefits of getting drunk repeatedly... Are far, you know, are far diminished in the light of all the shit that comes after it. Um, but yeah. also, can I can I just mention? You often say that thing about eating too much, about eating. Somebody mindfully. was just saying there that they were eating loads of sweets. Yeah, but you talk about this thing about being have, eating consciously, eating mindfully. Yeah. And what my worry with this crisis is is that it encourages us as a society to drink not without any sort of consciousness mm. or, con, you know, mm. conscience. No, I tell. Of, Come on, let's just have yeah, a drink. Yeah, let's just drink. And also... I mean, loads of people have been sharing on social media that they've bought... I look, just want to keep on that knee. They've bought loads and loads of booze for the entire time and they've already drunk it all. Wow. Box, boxes of stuff. Boxes. And, and they've already drunk it, so they've got yeah. to replay. Chi Chi is looking away, by the way. She sits on guard there, so we don't need to worry yeah, about her Yeah, yeah, she in. loves she? sitting there. If we open that door now, she'll no, come yeah, in. She, Neve, I'm worried about a friend's drinking for a long time. I've voiced concerns, but she says she hasn't got a problem because she only drinks on the weekend. But when she does, she drinks when she passes out. I've got a friend like that, haven't I? I'm not going to say her name. And I worry so much about I know how that feels. And it becomes so difficult and so eggshelly to say anything, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. So it's really, really... Mm. <coughs> I um, don't even know what to say about that. Apart from there is Al-Anon, which is for friends and family and loved ones of alcoholics, where you can go, uh, where you can go and just talk about the, about that sort of stuff. There's footage. Someone was just mentioning the empty aisles. I, you know, because I'm I don't drink. I'm not constantly hammering it down the uh, alcohol aisles anymore. I like buying bottles of wine when I know your mum's coming over and all that sort of stuff. But otherwise, I don't go down there. And I, I was really shocked when I went to the drink aisles in the supermarket mm. and they were as deserted. A couple of people were mentioning there that the, uh, you know, it, it is a national medicine. It is a na this Where I get really frustrated with the whole alcohol thing is, like someone just said, if alcohol was introduced now, it would be classed as an incredibly addictive drug. Dangerous drug. And a lot know. of people who drink a lot are often very anti all other kinds of drugs and everything else. It seems such a hypocritical, contrasting, contradictory thing that just because we historically happen to have drunk most doesn't mean it's just fine for us. And I think to flag up, to flag up in a time like this, just to be cautious, is really needed. It's really necessary. 
Sean Cumming, I always wait first thing, dry mouth and beer fear, not worth it. Beer, beer fear. fear, that's a good phrase, Sean That Cumming. awful, beer like, what fear. have I done, what have I said, what have I been yeah. like, have I made a fool of myself? I don't think there's anything worse than that feeling. Yeah. Uh, let me just pull this up. Ooh. Oh, Natasha Fearon, you've tagged me in a picture on my Insta story of some diamond art. I hope it brings you a little spark of joy. I'll go and search that out straight after. Thank, thank you thank so you, much. Uh, there's a lot of Corona. Apparently, bit sales of Corona beer have gone through the roof. Yeah. Um, apparently, uh, there's a new drink their, called the Quarantini. People numb their um, feelings. Yeah. But the yeah. trouble is they come back. Much well, worse. that's the thing. And that's my other concern, is that if we get into this new normal of excessive drinking or justifying low level, essentially numbing of the pain. When we do come out the other side of this, I, my prediction is we're gonna come out of this with an, a huge glut of people entering rehab facilities, going into AA, needing all sorts of support and help. Because I think in a sense, this whole crisis will sanction even more Alcoholism. Well, that's interesting. RM Jam it's says it's fact. almost as if people already know they'll turn to drink to purchase it in advance. It's like accepting defeat before yeah. it begins. Well, that's interesting that you would call it defeat. Yeah. You see, that's obviously that's quite a healthy attitude to it, isn't it? To think of it as a defeat. Yes. Um, I think definitely a little bit of numbing here and there. Oh, let's have a nice little gin and tonic at the end of the day. I don't think it does any harm. But I think when people are trying to blot away what's happening, it just always makes it worse. Courtney Garrett, the skyrocketing of alcohol sales makes me worried about people who are isolating with family and are violent exactly. when drunk. Exactly. That's a whole plain, other part of it. Or just plain miserable or horrible. Yeah. I, I, I mean, it's one thing if you're ricocheting around your flat, off your tits, on your own. I mean, we're worried about that person, but you're not going to damage anyone else. Mm. But I tell you what, here's another part of the whole drinking thing. A lot of unexpected consequences happen as a result of getting drunk. For example, I've fallen down the stairs many times. When you get drunk, you get injured. I remember living in a flat once when Izzy was a baby and I smelt gas coming from downstairs and the woman downstairs was an alcoholic. I used to sort of say hello to her and sometimes I used to buy her a Jack Daniels. I had no consciousness of alcoholism then. And uh, one night I could smell gas, smell gas, and she'd fallen asleep with a gas hob on. And I had to break her door down, I had to go in, I had to turn it off, I had to wake her up. We, all the emergency services are now at their absolute yeah nth degree, stretched beyond belief. So imagine having to come out to a call from someone in a flat who's vomited or choking on their own vomit, falling down the step. You know how it happens. We all make mistakes. We all do stupid things, put our hands through a window. So there's that side of it too. So there's a kind of responsible drinking. I think you can drink responsibly. Mm. And I think it's really important that at all times we do all drink responsibly. Mm. Um, Cher Phillips, I have alcoholics in my family and it's a very slippery slope, but it's an ongoing joke, especially on parental sites now, about what time you can start to drink. It's very scarily tempting, I know. I know, some people on Instagram doing it, like, oh, here I am with my yeah. four o'clock wine. My and you're made to feel like an absolute just... party poop yeah. if you even question it for a second. Fine, don't, you know, do, do what you want, but... <laughs> I look, and that's something important. Drinking, this is from the World Health Organization, yeah. isn't it? And they say drinking too much alcohol will lower your immune system, making you more vulnerable to the disease. Yeah. But alcohol, mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what we want. We want a stronger immune system. The Alcohol Misuse Charity We Are With You has warned that new coronavirus lockdown laws will also result in a spike in drinking. So, you know, this idea of locking and hemming people in, now that's probably the trade-off between keeping off licenses open. We are, I think what this, what a crisis like this does forces us to do, it forces us to face up to the things we're addicted to and the things we're codependent on. And if you think about it, the education system, the social system, the financial system, you know, it's all being questioned by this crisis, all of it. Yeah. And it's very hard to contend, you know, it's very hard to deal with that. And pressure is coming at all of us from different angles, isn't it? It's just like, it's, it is truly overwhelming. It's yeah. like a massive great tsunami has gone over our head. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Jamie, it's not just alcohol, it's food. All the temptation of being locked down can be very tough. Yeah. Well, my, I'm more of a problem, my problem is more food. I yeah. mean, I, it, it, it when, if I have a news day where I'm watching the news all day, I find myself just eating without realising it. It's a really good point because it's a similar thing. You're trying to push down your feelings. You're trying to numb your feelings, whether it be with alcohol or shopping. Yeah. Online shopping has gone up as well. Yeah. Amazon sales are massive. Here's... It's everyone trying to distract from this, the, 
the scariness. Kirsty Walker Ryan, you've made a really important point here. Your friend's dad died of COVID nineteen, and his health issues were alcohol. I don't want to. I don't. I'm going to say something that could be considered quite contentious now. But when they talk about the people that are dying that have underlying health conditions, some of them, some of them, some of them under a certain age, and they're not in that sort of, you know, the most vulnerable age category, I wouldn't be at all surprised mm. if what those underlying conditions have been caused by in some instances is not even being alcoholics or active alcoholics, but a high alcohol consumption life or a high smoking life. So for example- well, that's why the World the Health Organization is saying watch it because absolutely. it reduces the, your immune system. Yeah, because the WHO have, have absolutely stated that the reason the demographic of most victims in China is men over a certain age is because they all smoke right. in a way that the women and the families over there just don't. Yeah. And, and so, you know, it's, you can either say, oh, there's no connection, I just want to have a bit of fun. Or you can say, well, there is a connection, I'm going to manage my fun, be responsible with it, and not create more of a problem for everyone else to have to bloody deal with. That's the part of it. It's again, it's a bit like not going out. You're doing it for other people, if mm. not just for yourself. Mm. Uh, your dad was angry, Laura Laidlaw. My dad was angry when the pubs were closed because all he wanted to do was go and have a drink with his friends. Well, the social side of that, I can get. Yeah. I think it's a real challenge. A lot of people, it's a, it's a real, yeah. yeah. It's a home, isn't it? Yeah. For a lot of people. Sorry, I've just got a splinter. I'm not being rude. I've got a really annoying splinter. Right. That's quite annoying, finger. isn't it? Do you want me to suck yeah. it out? No, it's right. Okay. Carry on. Uh, yeah, so I, you know, that social side of it, I really get, because back in the day when I was drinking, if you'd removed my ability to just go out and hang out in the pub, I'd have been as frustrated myself. Yeah, can you myself. imagine, when you were drinking, I, what would this have felt like to you, this? Well, I'd have probably been one of those voices saying, what a load of old nonsense. And how much alcohol would you have put into but the house? If you're in denial, you will keep going to the pub and pretending you're not an alcoholic until you're dead. Mm. If you're an alcoholic, if you're an alcoholic, you, no, you don't want anyone to get in the way of you going to the pub and having a drink. I didn't for years. But a lot of people that go to the pub, it's not alcohol. Is no, it? of course it's, it's it the isn't. company, of isn't it? Isn't. Yeah, yeah. Get a hot needle for that. Yeah. Uh, Holly, no, it's not totally right, but but I'm going to do a science newsletter every day and send it to anyone who wants. That's a great idea. Anyone who wants to email me. Brilliant. Well Brilliant. done, Holly. Holly, Holly. Lucy Rose, that's what my mum was like. Jake, Dana, while it isn't alcohol, I know friends who have been online gambling more as they're bored. Can you still online gamble? Oh, oh yes. God, of course. Oh, I thought online gambling was God, banned. Oh, God, don't just... tell me that. Yeah. Oh, that's a nightmare. What a bloody nightmare. Because, again, it's exactly the same. I mean, I've said this before, when Mark was in the Priory, everybody, whether it was alcohol, food, sex, gambling, you were all in the same group, weren't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, Treatment absolutely. is exactly the same, whatever yeah, yeah. your addiction is. Yeah. Uh, and online shopping, yeah, I guess so. Oh, yeah. I guess so. I guess it's all those things you can just do safely from within from your home. from what's going on, doesn't yeah. it? So anyway, if you're struggling, if you know someone who's struggling, I think it's a time where it's all right to say, say you've got a dad in your family who's just drinking a bit too much, too, too much every night. I think you just put your hand over their glass one night and say, dad, or say to your mum, dad, especially if they're not, as long as they're they're not, not violent or monstrous or any of that, just say, just, just watch it and just but I, take them but to the I World Health say, Organization. But I would website. say, Mark. I would say, Mark. I think it doesn't work when somebody's actually drinking. I think you've got to say it to somebody. When no, sober. actually, that's very true. Never do it when they're actually drinking. drinking. Say it the next day when they feel listening. like shit. Yeah, and just say, oh, you know, I just I'm a bit worried about you. You yeah. just, you just got to say it really gently, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Are you worried? That's quite a good thing to say. Are you worried at all? Yeah. You know, do you feel yeah, like no, with all idea. the stress and all the strain, do you feel like maybe we're all drinking a bit too much? Yeah. That's quite a good opener, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Um, Jake Danner, I like the way Rocket Man dealt with addiction. I thought it was a bit. I thought it was a bit of a conceit. The idea of it all happening from an AA meeting. But I yeah. thought. I think Elton John's story is absolutely effing phenomenal. And the, and the way that he helps. Yeah. Uh, you know, he he takes people in all the time, doesn't he, and helps them to get sober. Yeah. I love that. Bethany Brown, probably a stupid question. Never a stupid question. I've just joined. Do you drink, Nads? She does. How do you balance drinking around Mark? Good question. Um, well, I don't drink very much at all. She goes out and has fun with her friends, but you don't drink much around the house, do you? But, no. Uh, yeah. But is that because I make it a bad feeling about that? Do I make No, it's not because you make it a bad feeling, but I just think it's a bit of respect. So, like, if we've both had a really stressful day, not an upsetting yeah. day, but a stressful day, yeah. and I pop open a bottle of wine and have a glass of wine... 
you wouldn't say anything about that, but I wouldn't no, do that because that's not fair. No, I find you so very I, respectful, so but I, equally. Yeah, so, so, I, so, and I never say this stuff to my, like, so I will never say, oh, God, I wish I could have a glass of wine. Because, yeah. But I just think if I was, if, if I'd had a really stressful day with somebody and they pop over and a, pop over and a lovely cold glass of bottle of rosé and pour it, I'd be thinking, oh, God, I wish I could have a glass. Yeah, I mean, so I mean, I, I'd be lying if I didn't say that when Nadia's family will come over and there's a really nice. He, I tell you, there's something I'm already thinking about is when this is all over and everyone's like, yeah, and I hope there is a moment where that happens. I'm going to really feel left out outside of being able to have a drink to celebrate. Just as well, a, I'm, to, I, I won't be thinking it in terms of have a drink to celebrate. That won't see, make it. But sad. I'm an alcoholic, I'll be, I'll see, be so like, I'm thinking in those so terms. So I wouldn't at all. I haven't yeah. thought once. Oh God, when this happens, I'll have a drink. Oh, it's not funny. Oh my yeah. God, when this happens, I'm gonna hug mum and dad. Yeah. Oh my God, we can go up to town and we can. I haven't thought once. Yeah. I'll celebrate with a drink. Isn't that funny? Fifteen years you haven't drunk, yeah. and yet you would still. It's that. It's that I'd imagine bug. that that's the most important thing for everyone. But when? But why? Because pe the one thing people haven't had to stop doing is drinking. No, true. true I mean, very it, true. I mean, if it had been isolation and all alcohol had been removed, yeah. I would understand that that concept because it'd be like, oh, we can all just have a drink. Yeah. But the thing is, the only thing people are able to do is have a bloody drink. True. Tom W, <laughs> my dad is a vicious alcoholic. My sister and I oh, know no. he, we will get the call one day that it's killed him. Oh, We've tried no. and tried with him over the years and now we just can't. I don't know what to say to someone in that situation. I, I because, well, and also because a major contingent part of my stopping drinking was to protect Nadia and my children from me, my behaviour and me potentially dying. I would never want to, it's also what in, in the end stopped me from smoking. I didn't want my children to have to see me dying of lung cancer. Um, I do think it's about, are you okay with drinking the house? I pour, when Nadia's family come over, I am the drinks pourer. I love it. I love the conviviality that comes with mm. family and people drinking. Yeah, so we've got alcohol all over the place. And I don't ever think of going looking for it. I just go looking for Nutella. Amy Vincent, one of my parents is an alcoholic. It's hard to have a relationship because of the denial and then hardly being sober. It's easy to love someone who's become an alcoholic, but it's hard to like them. Mm. Very have have any of you heard about Al-Anon? Yeah. It, it's, it's, there's Al-Anon, there's Al-Teen, which is for alcoholics, or, or and there's ace, uh, teenage alcoholics, and there's adult children of alcoholics. Uh, and they're all, they can all, they all, I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, it's like a fix all, but it can be something, some kind of support and some sort of yeah. help. You should look those up. And just maybe reach out to one of the online meetings because the thing is, there's so many online meetings at the moment. But it's the awful guilt that comes with being with an alcoholic. You know, I mean, I've got alcoholism. I've had alcoholism around me a lot through my life, and it's absolutely draining. And when we went, when I, when Mark was in the priory and they we, we used to go in for the family days, they used to say what they said. What's often very tragic is that somebody will get sober, and then when they get sober, the per the family or the wife or the husband or whatever, become very ill. And that is because they have been on a, carrying uh, the, the stress right. and been on a knife's edge for a long time. And then their, their other half gets sober or their mum or their dad and it's just pff, illness hits them. Isn't that interesting? The stress of being around somebody and, that you love and watching somebody that you love hurt themselves and put themselves in peril is an enormous strain yeah. on you. Yeah. So all of you that the messages are coming up that are going through the, the, that, my heart really goes out to you because I do know what that feels like and it's just it's just awful. awful. Oh look, there's a comment from Nanny Dye. <gasps> Stephanie, Stephanie, my husband Rain, drinks a bottle, bottle of vodka every night. Oh sweet, God, that's awful. That's tough. And God, does he get difficult after could you, a bottle of vodka? Is he approachable enough that the next morning you could say to him, could we just get that down to half a bottle? You know what I mean? You need to kind of go, oh, look, nanny, die. It's never going to be over. I'm starting to think. I'm fed up with it today, totally. Love you all guys, though. Aww. You're so warm and kind and supportive. Aww. Oh, mum. Why did you go out? You silly woman. <clears throat> silly, stubborn woman. Anyway, we're going to work through that system. We're going to find a way of getting you back. Yeah, um, yeah mum. I feel a bit like that today. That's exactly how I feel. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of feeling like that yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and Nanny Dai, Mum, 
if you can re refrain from watching our reaction to a film that's been edited of you, the best bits of you that might pop up on your iPad tonight. It's so funny. It's so funny and it's so sweet. And we I all think we should laugh let her watch it. She's oh, there on right. her so, own. Well, go, go, I'll send you the link later. I'll send you the it's link so later. It's so funny, Nanny Di. You'll be cracking up. Amir Nail, good question. Mark, will there ever be a point where you can say I'm no longer an alcoholic? I, um, mm. Very interesting because I saw somebody today describe himself as a recovered alcoholic and I think that's what you should call yourself. Do you? Yeah. I've always believed it's a journey and as soon as you say you've achieved something, I don't know, I, I feel that the achievement is not, is, is not quite achieving. But I just think it's really unfair because I think it's a really addictive thing that people are made to feel guilty about Yes. they can't handle it and actually it's the, it's the substance, it's not the person. No. And, and you are recovered because you've worked that shit out, you've worked that for your body, it's really... Because I, I have a theory that alcoholics... A lot of alcoholics have an addict, have have uh, um, sugar, have an allergy, allergy to alcohol. I really believe it, and it it triggers something in their body. So I don't think it's your fault. Yeah. You're an alcoholic, and and to say I'm recovering makes me feel like you still think that you have to. I don't know. Almost apologise for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, Stephanie Lloyd, I have an obsession with Diet Coke too. So does Mark. Yeah, well, I used to. I'm trying to get off it now. Yeah. Um, it's hard, that, because it's not good for you. He got up, you were up to about 10 cans a day when he left the Priory. I do find one of the oddest things they do say, though, is that you, you, I'm an alcoholic at the point that you're not drinking. Do you know what I mean? I think it's, it, it's always struck me as odd that one's a definitive yeah. alcoholic when you try and stop drinking. I, you know what I wish you Rather than when you're say, a, yeah. I've got an allergy to alcohol. Because that's yeah. what I think you have. Yeah. I think you should stop calling yourself an alcoholic and call yourself, you've got an allergy. Yeah. Rebecca Little, it is now ginger beer. You're right. Listen, we accept, right, that we have allergies to milk, to nuts, to bread, to anything on the planet. But you never, ever, ever hear the words allergic to alcohol. Yeah. Do you? And it's ethanol. No, exactly. It's so poisonous that if you put ethanol in a, in a tub, you can't, we saw it on that documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not allowed to open it because it'll kill you, yeah. the vapour. And yet, have you ever heard anyone say they've got an allergy to alcohol? No, no. Well then, but that's ridiculous. Absolutely. I think alcoholics are allergic to it. Yeah. Okay, guys. Well, that was yeah. that, that was vaguely useful and an opportunity to sort of share and, and, and we've chaired and shared in a sort of AA fashion. Alcoholics Anonymous and various other alcohol support groups are running online um, groups and I know that there's the option to be able to download meetings as podcasts um, so that you can listen obviously retrospectively uh, and um, if you need to share any Talking of your worries or something that is a worry obviously reach out to all of the kind of usual places but preferably places like AA will you know I, I presume and I hope they've got people manning their their phone lines yeah they're the online they're uh, and they're online so do reach Don't out get adult children of alcoholics as well that's a good one too yeah and as Zoe Agnew says, alcohol is the only drug you have to apologise for. Exactly. For not it's, it's weird, isn't it? Sorry, I'm not drinking. Sorry. Oh, God, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not taking sorry, heroin. I'm not going to bang on your crack pipe tonight. Yeah. You wouldn't say that, would you? Once you've recovered, can you not go back drinking moderately or would it just go bad again? Well... It would go bad again. It... <laughs> It's not that it won't go, it's not that, here's the thing, I often get asked, what would happen if, like, my girls, my children always say to me, but dad, what would happen if you had a drink tonight? My line on that is always this, I would probably be brilliant, we'd all have a laugh, I would drink to excess a bit that night, but I probably wouldn't drink to blackout that night, and we'd all have a great time, we'd all probably wake up in the morning and go, oh, isn't that nice, wasn't that nice? I wasn't wouldn't, that I'd be nice? thinking. No, you wouldn't, no, absolutely. Go. Wasn't that nice? And then literally, the gene that's the hook that grabs you, grabs you in, you'll be, rem you, you'll be reminded that for that moment the night before, your worries did subside. Yeah. Your worries did evaporate a bit. You were the life and soul. You didn't have a fear for the consequences of how you behave, but you love making your children laugh hysterically. Don't think for a minute, as you can probably hear, I have not run this positive, possible narrative, possible ugh, narrative before. I have, heartbreakingly, thinking, could I... Maybe I could. Maybe if I did, it wouldn't be so terrible. One thinks that all the time. And yet, I know for a fact that it's not the first day, not the second day, mm. not the third day. But what I always say to the girls Sick. is, come back to me about four weeks later 
and I will be a shell of the man you enjoyed that first night. Yeah. And I often say to the girls, I say, because they'll often come in and go, oh, we had a great time here, and his, this person was great, and this person's parent was this. I said, that's all great and good. But unfortunately, I can't just do it for one night. I, I've proved that because I've tried so many times. And if and you don't know for sure that the people you're having a great time with aren't doing that every night as well. So you might have, you know, it's always that thing of, oh, well, he seems a bit to hold his drink, or he's okay, or doesn't seem to have a problem, but you're not with them every night. You're there for one night. And so my line on that is often, I could be great fun for one night, two nights, three nights. I often think when they want to bring their friends around, that it'd be great, you know, their dad's kind of pouring the drinks and we're all kind of bonhomie together and, oh, isn't it lovely? But I know that within four weeks, I'd be an absolute mess. An absolute mess. Lying, scheming, full of guilt, hiding the alcohol, worried, all that shit. Diane Adley go. said it's impossible to explain that thing of not being able to have one drink. And yeah. I think that's a good one to end on. You can't go back. I can't go back. No, no, it doesn't nanny die. Oh, no, no, nanny die. She's gone, gone up again. Yeah. Oh, it's, all, it's all gone funny. Uh, where is she? No, oh, no, there she is. It's impossible to explain that thing of not being able to have one drink. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. <laughs> I was in the middle of a really emotional sort of monologue, so I'm sorry. Um, all right, guys. Lots of love. Lots of love. All Thanks, right. guys. Bye. 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 Ooh, ooh, mm -hmm. ooh.